This is the Raspberry Pi. It's a fully functional computer that costs just 40 euros. Yes, you can use it to browse the web, work with documents, and even create your own home DIY projects. This is Thomas from TGNB, and in this video we're going to take a look at how you can get started with the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi packs some great hardware. In fact, this single board computer is equipped with 1.5 GHz quad-core CPU and comes in 1, 2, 4 or 8 GB of RAM. It contains two USB Type-2 ports that you can use to connect your keyboard and mouse, two USB Type-3, a gigabit Ethernet port, two micro HDMI ports for your display, a USB Type-C for power, and a micro SD card slot for your SD card, which should contain the files and the OS of the Pi. On board, you can also find Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that you can use, of course, to connect to your network and for Bluetooth to connect uh, several devices. So, let's take a quick look at how you can get started. We're going to start with installing the actual OS on the SD card itself. So, uh, this involves downloading the Raspberry Pi imager from raspberrypi.com forward slash software. So, it is simply downloading this imager and then follow a few steps to flash the SD card um, uh, of, the, of your Pi. So, um, I have already plugged the SD card in my SD card reader that is connected to my computer. So, the next step would be to download the imager. So I'm going to just download it right now. Next, I'm going to open it and install it. All right, so let's run it. And now we just we just need to choose the operating system. And in this case, you have this uh, dialog which allows you to select um, different types of the OS. In our case, we're running the Raspberry Pi version 4, so it would be recommended if you select the 64-bit version. As you can see, this is compatible with the Raspberry Pi 3, 4 and the 400, so we're going to select that one. The next step would be to choose the storage. So in this case, uh, we have this uh, mounted storage which contains 64 gigs. Please make sure that you select the correct one as this process will erase the whole SD card. You also have the option to select uh, and uh, you know change some advanced settings. So that includes enabling SSH, setting the default username and password, and configuring the Pi to connect to a wireless LAN. Uh, we're just going to stick with the default options and go straight away with writing the card with writing the OS on the card. So as you can see over here, uh, you get this note saying that uh, all existing data on the storage device will be erased. Make sure that you have selected the correct mounted uh, storage. So we're going to hit yes, and this would start with, uh, you know, it would start writing the OS to the SD card. This will take some time, so sit back and relax. We'll be back when this is done. Now that we have flashed the OS on the SD card, we can go ahead and connect our keyboard and mouse, preferably in the USB 2 over here. Next, the SD card, which goes right over there. The micro HDMI, you can use any of these two ports, and finally the power, note that this will power the Pi um, if you have this connected to your power supply. As you can see, these two LEDs over here indicate that your Pi is actually starting. So in the first boot, 
we simply need to go through a guide to set up the Pi. This is very straightforward. So we are greeted with the welcome screen. We need to press next to get started. All right, so you need to select your own country, language and time zone. If you prefer to use the English language, just check this box. And if you prefer the US keyboard, check this box. Next. All right, next we need to create the user. So this is the user we're going to use to log in. Uh, so actually I'm going to use the default ones. The default username is pi, P-I, and the password is raspberry. So I'm just going to type raspberry and hit next. Note that you are asked to choose something else because the username and the password uh, we provided are the default values, so preferably would pick something else, but in this case, we're just going to proceed. Alright, so the screen seems to be uh, well adjusted, so I'm just going to hit next. Next, we need to connect to the Wi-Fi network. Note that Wi-Fi is actually on board the Pi, so you don't need to purchase additional uh, Wi-Fi scanners. We're just going to connect this network. All right, so next we need to update the software. So now that you have updated the software, we're just going to restart the system. Okay, so we just booted uh, the Pi for the very first time. We, you, you can see the desktop over here, as well as um, the menu icon, which allows us to open um, any application that is pre-installed on the Pi. Please note that I have installed Office through this Preferences Add Slash Remove Software option. So as you can see, um, the default web browser is installed, it's called Chromium, and uh, this would enable you to browse the web as you usually do um, on your laptops or computers. So let's head to raspberrypi.com and uh, as you can see, it's pretty okay, considered the price you're paying as well as the specs um, on the Raspberry Pi 4. Let's head to um, LibreOffice Writer. So this is equivalent to Microsoft Word. So as you can see, the loading times are pretty good. And this means that you can, of course, create new documents as well as open existing documents as well. Uh, you also have the file system. Note that's, that this is um, the Raspberry Pi OS is based on Linux, so uh, you can create files, save files, uh, save files to external storage, and uh, stuff like that. All right, so note that you also have some other accessories available, such as a calculator, of course, um, archiver, a PDF viewer, the task manager, a text editor, the terminal, and so forth. You also have an option to change the appearance uh, and other preferences, as well as change some uh, configuration settings of the Raspberry Pi itself. Lastly, when you're done, you can simply press the logout menu button to shut down your system. So after booting the Raspberry Pi for the very first time, one can proceed with uh, creating custom DIY projects. The Raspberry Pi features 40 GPI pins, and these pins actually allow you to interface with other hardware. Such hardware includes LEDs, sensors, such as PIR sensors, fire sensors and stuff like that, so you can easily um, use these sensors to uh, create your own projects. The Raspberry Pi also features this CSI connector over here, 
which allows you to connect a camera to your Raspberry Pi. Last but not least, you can also use the Raspberry Pi to actually automate your home. In fact, we will be featuring this project in a future video. So make sure that you like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.